Continuando con el programa, vamos a volver a oír al doctor Nakajima. El trabajo se llama, o la presentación se llama, Investigación sobre marcadores de riesgo en cáncer gástrico, estudio prospectivo. Doctor Nakajima tiene la palabra. Thank you again. So, so in my first presentation, I introduced that uh, in the retrospective study, the methylation level in the normal mucosa can be a new biomarker for the gastric cancer risk. So, we conducted a prospective multicenter study to confirm our hypothesis, our idea, in the 2007. The aberrant DNA methylation accumulated in the normal appearing tissues has been shown to be associated with cancer risk. The aim of this study was to prospectively access, assess metachronous gastric cancer risk using the menstruation level of the gastric mucosa. So, aberrant DNA menstruation is potently induced in the non-cancerous gastric mucosa by H. pylori infection. When H. pylori infection discontinues, the DNA methylation reflects the gastric cancer risk. This is a protocol. In this prospective single-arm multicenter study, the patient were enrolled six months after the current H. pylori infection discontinued. After the H. pylori eradication, we calculated the methylation level. And we will follow the five years the patient annually. This is a hypothesis. Endoscopic follow-up after ESD was performed once a year. And the primary endpoint was the incidence of the metachronous gastric cancer has an association with uh, basement methylation level. So indication for in the patient has a ESD for the early gastric cancer between 2000 to 2010. The patient ages 40 to 80 with early gastric cancer who planned for or underwent ESD. Three institutions participated in this prospective study. The National Cancer Center in my hospital enrolled 700, about 700 early gastric cancer patients after ESD. This is the total clinical cost. These patients were excluded for the additional surgical resection. 852 patients were included in this study. The first point, so we checked the H. pylori status. This patient was negative for current situation. Probably may have the past history of the H. pylori infection. The other 463 patients were the culture test was positive. So we performed H. pylori eradication. 24 were unsuccessfully eradicated. The about 820-800 patients were followed up. After the, we checked the H. pylori negative, we performed analysis of the methylation level. We analyzed, we followed about 800 patients. During the follow-up, actually, 81 metachronous gastric cancer were detected. So I will show 
the metagranus gastric cancer in our hospital. So please find the metagranus gastric cancer. So case one. So you can see the tiny reddish mucosa. That is a diagnosed as a gastric cancer. We performed the ESD. The pink line indicates it's the intramucosal cancer, probably diagnosed as a dysplasia in the Western countries. And retrospectively, one year ago, we missed this region. But growth time is not so fast. The case two, you can see the reddish mucosa is a greater curvature of the gastric body. We can diagnose early gastric cancer at the marked like this and perform the ESD. The dead no submucosal invasion. And that is another metagranous gastric cancer. In the retrospectively, the physician missed this lesion, but probably this reddish portion was uh, uh, the lesion. The case three was relatively very easy to detect. You can see the white spot, the lesser curvature of the anterior side of the gastric body. After injury of die, the cancer can be visualized easily. So we performed the ESD, and the curative resection was achieved. One year ago, this is, it is maybe a region. But there is, well, aggressive, there is no aggressive change in the one-year follow-up. This is also the metagranous gastric cancer. You can see the depression. The important thing is preparation of the <laughs> examination. There is no bubble in the stomach. We wash the stomach again and again to find such kind of small region. After the precise examination, the marking and the performed the ESD, and the curative resection was achieved. Well, this is a relatively easy cases. In the lateral flexion, you can see the abelid. This is a scar very close to the, the former ESD. We performed ESD, the curative resection was achieved. So you can realize all of the metacross region was uh, superficial. We can treat it ESD repeatedly. <coughs> we continue the case series. Sometimes in the H. pylori infection, if you have the patient has a gastritis, the front region was missed. It was relatively difficult, but we set the mark. But the uh, anterior side, the region line is unclear, so we set the mark like this. Unfortunately, the curative resection was achieved. The pink line indicates the uh, intramucosal cancer. But that is the uh, last series. Of course, there is a severe atrophy, there is some scar. Oh, somehow difficult to trace the margin, but probably this line indicates the cancer. We set the safety margin and perform the curative resection was achieved. This table show the recent series of metacoronal gastric cancer, the National Cancer Center Hospital. All of the region is less than uh, 
20 millimeter, but most of this region were 10 millimeter. But sometimes the region has a undifferentiated component. But anyway, the curative reduction was achieved. This, this, trial, this table shows the total cases of the or, or National Cancer Center Hospital. The 92.5% of the region were <coughs> differentiated type adenocarcinoma, but surprisingly, 7.5% was the signet ring cell carcinoma. And so we calculate, investigated the association, the incidence of the metachronal scarcity cancer and the methylation level of the baseline. Oh. Uh, we divided the patient into four groups. The high methylation level patient, <laughs> the low methylation level patient. So we analyzed the three genes. My, micro RNA 124 A3 is a function of the tumor silencing, tumor suppressor function. So interestingly, in the high methylation level, the cumulative incidence of the metachronous gastric cancer is very high. But the lower methylation level is the incidence the main, maintained relatively low. Another two genes also show the same tendency. This is a multivariate analysis. Micro RNA, RNA. This methylation level is shows uh, the trend P value with a uh, uh, cumulative incidence of the metachronous gastric cancer. Uh, that's it, that is our uh, uh, first report. To show the usefulness of methylation level for the gastric cancer, uh, gastric cancer risk in the prospective study. So, in conclusion, the methylation level of the microRNA 124A3 is associated with increased risk of developing metachronous gastric cancer. The methylation level accumulated normal tissues is a promising biomarker for cancer risk. Now, we are preparing a clinical setting. And uh, my colleague, Dr. Asada, will submit this data, the important article. Please wait for a while. Thank you for your kind attention. Gracias, doctor.